So, uh, thanks. Uh, so first I'd like to thank the uh, organizers for the, for the invitation to speak. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is strong noise sensitivity and random graphs, and everything I speak about will be joint work with A.L. Lubetsky. And feel free to interrupt me anytime you yeah, want for comments, questions, or whatever. Uh, okay, so the outline, the outline of the talk is, uh, first I'll tell you what noise sensitivity of Boolean functions means, and then I'll describe the benjamini kalai schramm theorem. Uh, then I'm going to tell you a, a, a different notion, a somewhat stronger notion called strong noise sensitivity. And this uh, sort of just came up in some natural way. We were trying to understand the noise sensitivity of the Rene uh, of the um, erdos rene random graph model, which I'll remind you of, or tell you of, and just in the analysis of trying to study noise sensitivity for it, this, this somehow this notion seemed to very naturally arise out of it, and it turned out to be somewhat interesting, and so we call that noise sensitivity, so that will be part of the talk. And then what, the main part of the talk will be to describe uh, noise sensitivity, or sometimes strong noise sensitivity, uh, for certain properties involving the erdos rene random graph model. So let me tell you right now, although most people probably know, let me tell you right now what the erdos rene random graph model so is very simple. It has two parameters, n and p, and it's just a random graph on n vertices. The n is for the number of vertices, and then between each pair of vertices, I simply put an edge there independently for uh, different uh, pairs, each with probability p. So I get a random graph. And that's called the erdos rene random graph model, which turns out to be interesting. And I'll give you some sketch of some arguments. OK. So uh, Boolean functions and noise sensitivity. So what is the basic setup for, for noise sensitivity? Well, we have n random variables, x1 through xn. They're iid, and they're 1 with probability pn, and 0 with probability 1 minus pn. And a lot of models, pn will just be a half. Uh, but we allow it to depend upon n, in and in particular for the erdos rene random graph model, it's very important that the pn will, will depend upon n. Okay, and so we start off with this random sequence of coin flips, and then we have a Boolean function, f from 0, 1 to n into 0, 1. Uh, and we'll assume this function f is, is going to be non-degenerate. So, uh, so the probability that f is 1, I mean, the 0, 1 to the n just corresponds to the, this possible sequence, sequences x1 through xn. So then I can talk about the probability that f is 1. And throughout the talk, we're always going to make sure that the probability of f is 1 is, that f is non-degenerate. The probability f is 1 is going to be bounded away 0 and 1. So delta is positive. OK, now in noise sensitivity, you do a small perturbation of x. And this perturbation is called x sub epsilon. Gives you a new sequence, x1 epsilon through xn epsilon. And it's the small perturbation of x. So what do we do? Each xi is independently resampled with probability epsilon. So in other words, to each of x1 through xn, independently, I take the bit and I decide to resample it. And resample means I cross off what it was and I put a new thing there a 1 or a 0 with the probabilities pn or 1 minus pn. So just have a little picture here. That might, might be my sequence x. And then I decide each one independently. Epsilon is very small. I resample it. In this particular realization, the third bit and the second to last bit are resampled. And then for those bits, I then put it, I decide again whether it's going to be 1 or 0. And here it happened to turn out to be this. So it happened to, this zero happened to be, stay a zero after it was re-randomized, while this one happened to have switched to a zero. OK, any questions? OK, so now we're going to get to the notion of noise sensitivity. The, the question of noise sensitivity simply asks, is f of x and f of x epsilon, you've just perturbed a little bit, you'd want to know, is f of x and f of x, uh, x epsilon, is it, are they very likely to be the same? So this would be high correlation. Or are they almost independent, which would be low correlation? So that's the question. And the answer is, of course, it depends. So if, 
of course, if you fix n and you fix the, the Boolean function f, then of course, if epsilon is extremely small, of course f and f, fx and f of x epsilon are very likely to be the same. Because if epsilon is very small, even x and x epsilon are going to be the same with very high probability. And so f of x and fx epsilon will be the same with high probability. So the right way to ask the question is you should think of epsilon as completely fixed but very small. And then you take n to be very large. And once you formulate the question like that, you, it's sort of, you naturally come up with the following notion uh, due to Benjamin E. Klein Schramm that a sequence of Boolean functions, Fn, is called noise sensitive if, so this is a definition, and it's supposed to correspond exactly to when f of x and f x epsilon are independent. And so the right definition should be if for any epsilon positive, and this, this is, I formulate it slightly different than the usual way, but it's equivalent, but it'll be, I want to do it this way. So I look, at the prob I, condi I look at the probability that Fn of the perturbed sequence is 1, given Fn of the original string is 1. And if these were independent, this would just be, of course, the probability that Fn of x epsilon is 1, the probability of that. And so I call it noise sensitive if the difference between these approaches 0 as n goes to infinity for any fixed value of epsilon. So that's what noise sensitivity means. Uh, while it's not, not obvious, it, uh, it turns out that if this quantity here approaches zero for one value of epsilon, it approaches zero for all values of epsilon. So it doesn't matter what epsilon you, you use. OK. So let me give you very quickly, extremely quickly, four examples. Dictator, so fnx is just x1. It's pretty obvious that this is not noise sensitive for any p because the first bit will very unlikely to be resampled. So this is not noise sensitive. And in fact, it's something which is called noise stable, which I might, might mention at the end of the talk. Um, uh, the parity function, I sum up the bits mod 2 and think of Pn being a half. In this case, uh, it's going to be, it's not hard to see, it's noise, it'll be noise sensitive, because it's very likely one of these bits will be resampled and everything gets mixed up. And, uh, so this is noise sensitive. The majority function might take a little extra thought. So the majority function is a function which is, it's one if there's more ones than zeros. Uh, and imagine n is odd, so this is a nice, uh, probably f1 is, is a half. And it, it turns out this one is also, this is uh, not noise sensitive. Uh, think if you want for p being a half. So it, if the original sequence has more ones than zeros, and epsilon's small, the, after you perturb things, it's also going to be likely to be 1. And this is, turns out to also be something which is called noise stable, which I'm not describing at this point. I'll mention another example just because it comes up later. If, if we take the erdos renyi random graph model where p is taken to be a half, uh, what we want to do is we want to ask, is there a big clique? Now it turns out if you look at the size of the biggest clique and look at its distribution, for most values of n, it's extremely concentrated on one value. There's, the largest clique is going to be this number with probability close to 1. And that number is something going to be like 2 log base 2 of n minus 2 log 2 uh, of n. Um, but nonetheless, there will be occasional values of n where, in fact, the, the distribution of the largest clique is non-degenerate. It'll be one of two values, each with some non-trivial probability. When that occurs, you have an, an interesting Boolean function. I mean, the Boolean function is, of course, just the indicator function of, say, that the, the clique is the larger size. So occasionally, you can get an interesting e event or Boolean function here. Um, and then, in this case, it turns out to be noise sensitive. Uh, OK, any questions? OK, now uh, I just want to do one slide on percolation. I'm not going to be discussing any percolation other than the talk, but this is such a, a nice example where noise sensitivity and percolation come together. Uh, I wanted to address one slide to this. So in this case, we have an n by n box in the, in the hexagonal grid in Z2. And we color, the, say the blacks will be 1 and the whites will be 0. Uh, so those are our sequence of n bits. Or in fact, if it's an n by n box, they'll be about n squared bits. Uh, and the, 
and P, as I said, P is a half. And the event we're going to look at is the following. Uh, I mean, of course, the Boolean function is the same as, a, as an event. The event we're going to look at is, is there a crossing from the left side to the right using the black, black hexagons? So in this particular case, we see there is a, 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 a crossing, a black crossing, and that's the Boolean function. Uh, and so you can ask, is this noise sensitive? So in other words, if we had a crossing beforehand, red now becomes black, and now we do this epsilon noise, now notice when we do this epsilon noise, I'm, I'm re-randomizing epsilon percent of the bit. So look, if you look at the configuration, it looks almost the same. I've only changed a few of these, uh, a few of these hexagons, but the epsilon's fixed, the system's very large, and you can ask, well, is it the case if I had this crossing before and I epsilon noise it, am I, I going to still have a crossing? And, or, or is it these become independent, which means noise sensitivity? And this was one of the main results proved in the original Benjamin E. Kalai Schramm paper on noise sensitivity, that the percolation crossings are noise sensitive. Uh, let me just make a quick comment. In noise sensitivity in general, and in particular noise sensitivity for the uh, percol uh, percolation crossings, you can ask about quantitative noise sensitivity. And what quantitative noise sensitivity means is you don't fix epsilon, but you in fact let epsilon to even go to zero with n. Now if epsilon goes to zero too quickly with n, then things aren't going to, then the, the configurations will look too much alike and you won't get this asymptotic independence. But maybe the epsilon n can go to zero sort of at some slower rate and you still get the asymptotic independence. And if you're asking the question, how quickly can epsilon n go to zero, but I still get this asymptotic independence, then you're asking, you're, you're discussing uh, quantitative noise sensitivity issues. Um, and it turns out the, 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 you, you can do this here, and it's related to critical exponents. And uh, if, you, if you're interested in reading, I, I mentioned uh, Christoph Garban, and I have uh, lecture notes on this, and a, lar a large part of it is about percolation. Okay, that's the end of the percolation. Uh, so one of the concepts that comes up in the, if you're interested in noise sensitivity is another concept in, about Boolean functions, which has already risen in a uh, number of talks here, is the notion of piv uh, influences. Uh, so that plays a key role here. So we have pivotality and influence. And so as, as you've probably all seen for a Boolean function f, the event that i is pivotal is simply the event that if you were to change the ith bit, then the output function changes its value. If that happens, we say i is pivotal, and then if you talk about the probability that i is pivotal, that's what we call the influence. The influence of the ith bit, i sub i corresponds to the ith bit, this is the probability that i is pivotal. This is also called the bonzoff penrose index, and you might wonder which Penrose is it? So a lot of us might know Matthew Penrose, the probabilist, so it's Matthew Penrose's grandfather, Lionel Penrose. Okay. His father is also probably quite famous. Probably yeah, but not as famous as his uncle. Oh, it's his uncle. Okay. <laughs> and this is the uncle's father. <laughs> this is the famous Penrose. Right. Was he a mathematician? He, I think he did like everything. You know, back then they did everything. I think he did it was po political science, some medicine. He was a chess player. I don't know. But that's not, not, they were not as narrow as we are today. Uh, okay, so um, very quickly, is, so the dictator function, uh, these I'll just, is of course the influence of the first bit's one, it determines that all the other influences are zero. The parity function, of course, all the influences are one, because if you change any bit, the output changes. The majority function is the, is if you have, uh, is the only first slightly interesting one, is the, what's the probability of, say, the first bit being pivotal, well, of course, the first bit can only change the outcome of the election if there's a complete tie among all the other bits, and the probability that that's a tie is uh, of order one over square root of n. And well, you can this clique containment, you can comp compute the influences, but we, I don't, we won't worry about that now. Okay, so if you're interested in noise sensitivity, even if you were not interested in influences, you should be interested in influences because it's related to the noise sensitivity. So influences are very relative for noise sensitivity. So the, one of the main results in the Benjamin Nikolai Schramm pa uh, paper is if Pn is constant, then if you take 
the sum of the squares of the influences. You take the influence of all the bits, square them all, and add them up. If this sum goes to zero, then the sequence is noise sensitive. So the parity function doesn't, so you could ask, is it what happens about the converse? The, the parity function shows this, con, this condition above is not, in fact, necessary, because the parity function is noise sensitive. In fact, it's the most noise sensitive function, but the influence are all one. So the converse is not true. However, the converse is true for a large class of Boolean functions, namely all the monotone functions. So the, the, this condition above is necessary for monotone increasing functions. Again, for constant pn. This point I want to think of pn as constant. It doesn't depend upon n. Uh, okay, so this gives you a nice, that gives you a very nice, it gives you a, for monotone functions, and the rest of the talk, in fact, I'm only going to be dealing with monotone functions, then this gives you a necessary and sufficient condition for noise sensitivity for a constant level of noise, a uh, constant level of uh, p, which is constant. Uh, Notice the majority functions, what happens to that? I already told you it was not noise sensitive. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I told you that was not, not noise sensitive. And if you plug this into the thing, what happens? The influences were 1 over square root of n. You square that, you get 1 over n. I sum them up, I get 1. And so, in some sense, the sum just barely doesn't go to 0, in the sense that it, it doesn't go to infinity. So the majority function is just missatisfying that this sum goes to zero. And, and it turns out the majority function is an extremal example in a lot of respects in, in this uh, theory. OK, and the proof of this uses Fourier analysis and hypercontractivity. So the hypercontractivity corresponds to inequalities, which is the theme of the conference. So things fit in. OK, so now those results are for p being constant. Now, we're interested, okay, now if we're interested in the, G, the random graph model, uh, our p won't be constant as n varies. So let me just say a couple words about the small p problem. So first, that the BKS, BKS, Benjamin Nikolai Schramm theorem, it becomes false when pn approaches zero. Uh, one simple example you could take is I could take the erdos reni random graph model uh, where my my function is simply containing a k4. So does the graph contain a clique on four <coughs> points? It's a nice Boolean function. If I take my p to be n to the minus two-thirds, that's the correct p to take so that the, this event is non-degenerate. And then, it, then this is uh, clearly not noise sensitive because if I have a k4 sitting there and then I apply the noise, that k4 is going to be sitting there after I do the noise because those t six edges won't be killed. But it turns out uh, the condition on the previous slide, the sum of the squared influences goes to zero. So for varying p, there's results by Keller and Kindler. They, ha they have a, re a result which extends the BKS theorem. And it says it in, in certain cases into the regime pn equaling n to the minus uh, little o of one. So it, 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 it can't go to it can go to zero, you know, maybe like one, one over log n, but it can't go like a polynomial. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you skipped this on purpose. But you didn't say what the influences are for the example with the k4, but maybe you wanted to skip. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, yeah, it's an exercise. So it turns out when you compute. No, yeah, no, I know you, right. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's not an exercise for you. But uh, so, so you, if you plug in the influences and compute it, the, the sum won't go, go to zero. OK, uh, so um, however, the ca in, in the cases, in many cases, this critical value of pn for the model you're looking at, it, it turns it's going to be polynomially small in the variables. And so what are some examples we might be thinking about? Going back to the erdos reni model, uh, connectivity, you might ask for connectivity of this random graph model. You do the random graph, is the graph connected on, all, on the n vertices? So it turns out the right value of p to take for this particular property is log n over n. At that level, log n over n, the probability of being connected stays bounded away from 0 and 1 is then goes to infinity. And there even turns out to be sort of a, a, a very sharp threshold. If you replace log n by log n plus a million, 
then for, even, for, even, for n very large, in fact, the probability of being connected is, is very high. But anyway, this is sort of where the transition's occurring. So this is, this is at, a, at a level, at a polynomially small, like 1 over n. OK, so that might be one you'd be interested in. And you could ask if that's noise sensitive. We'll be coming back to things like this later. Another one is Hamiltonicity. Hamiltonicity means the graph contains a Hamiltonian cycle. That's simply a cycle that goes through all the vertices. So, if, so you can ask, does your graph have a Hamilton cycle in it? Um, and it turns out the correct value of p to study that problem turns out to be log n plus dub, double log n over n. At this particular value of p, the probability of ha having this Hamilton cycle is, is bounded away from 0 and 1. So, and another one is the giant component, uh, which if you do p equals 1 over n, that's sort of the exact uh, if you take p to be c over n, there's something very happening, interesting happening when c is 1, and you suddenly get this giant component. And we'll come back to something that occurs there. That, I don't think, I was going to mention something, but I, don't, I won't worry about this last slide, which begins, don't worry. So I'll skip that. Okay. So, uh, okay. So now I'm going to start to go, move into this notion of strong noise sensitivity. So, and so this is witnesses and strong noise sensitivity. So now our functions are going to be assumed to be monotone. You could maybe define this for non-monotone functions, but it's not very natural. Okay, so I, a, a one witness, or what some people might call a one certificate, or some people might be called a min term, it's a minimal, given a Boolean function, it's a minimal subset of the variables with the property that if I put a 1 at those, di at those bits, then the function is guaranteed to be 1, even if I put all zeros in the other bits. And that this set is minimal with respect to that property. So it's a set which, if I put 1 there, it's guaranteed to be to 1. But if I take any subset and put all 1s, I'm, I'm not guaranteed to be 1. OK, that's what a 1 witness is. So, so for example, if the, gra if the property is that the graph is connected, what would be a one witness, a set of edges where you know the graph is connected, that would of course be exactly a, a spanning tree of the graph. That would, uh, that would then, uh, that's exactly a one witness. Okay, so we let script one denote the set of one witnesses of some Boolean function, and similarly W sub zero will denote the zero, the set of zero witnesses. Okay, so. What is w it, it says it's, a, it's a zero witnesses. Those guys were, if I would have put zero at those places, I would be guaranteed the function is zero. OK, so noise sensitivity, OK, so in strong noise sensitivity, so I just recall exactly the definition we had of noise sensitivity. We said it's noise sensitivity, well, with respect, you always have this, the PN that's given to you. If for every epsilon positive, when I look at the probability that fn at the perturbed sequence is 1, given fn at the original sequence is 1, that conditional probability, and I subtract off the unconditioned probability, this goes to 0. Okay, that's the notion of noise sensitivity. Now, if we look, what does it mean fn of x is 1? If you know fn of x is 1, the only way fn of x can be 1, there has to be some witness, which is all 1s. Okay? So, so uh, but, uh, so again, one witness is just the set of variables with the part that if I would have put ones there, the, the function would be one. So uh, if fn of x is one, there's got to be some witness which is all ones. And imagine yourself in a situation where all the one witnesses, in fact, look the same. There's a lot of symmetry in your problem, and all the witnesses are the same, like containing a clique in a graph. All the cliques look the same. So now, if you had, if you have, uh, if you were in that situation, all the witnesses look the same. And I told you fn of x is one, so that's sort of telling you, ah, oh, there's some witness, one witness which is one, since it's you don't know which one it is. Sort of like conditioning on a, just sort of like conditioning on a particular witness being one. You can't say that. Okay, so, so, so you one. You, you might be able to trick people into thinking this, uh, that it's basically conditioning just on some witness being one. And so 
independent of whether that's true or not, if it were true, uh, th then the second definition would be the same as the first definition. So a sequence of Boolean functions is called one strongly noise sensitive if, um, well, in the, in the case, let's say, where you, all the witnesses were the same, basically instead of condition fn of x being one, I take a particular one witness and I condition it to be one. So I just take a one witness, I condition it being one, and then I ask, now after I do the per perturbation, what's the probability fn of, the, f after I do the perturbation, what's the probability of being one? And is it the case that this conditioning in the limit they become essentially independent, so if I then subtract off the unconditioned probability, this goes to zero. And if this occurs, I call it strong noise sensitive. Now, of course, in a lot of cases, the one witnesses might not be playing the same role. They might not all have the same structure. So I'll take a maximum of this conditional probability over all the, the, the one witnesses. And if this occurs, I call it strongly noise sensitive. OK, any comments, sir? Okay, so, okay, so the, the max is of course stronger, obviously. Uh, so if you can prove theorems which is one strong, then you get a stronger theorem with this definition. Of course, if we if you prove something's not one strong, you can start asking other things. But in a lot in a lot of situations, you might have symmetry anyway. Like a lot of the examples we'll describe, and then of course it doesn't matter. But and and there's other other there's other reasonable definitions one might use. This is somehow a, a clean one, but you could take weaker ones. Clear as in the eye of the beholder. You, you can ask me if it's true. It's not clear to me, but Right, that's the hint. Okay, yeah. So the answer to the question will be on the next slide. Um, almost. So then we have the notion of zero strong noise sensitivity, which is just the obviously the complete opposite. I condition on a zero witness being zero and ask how that affects things. Okay. Uh, Strong noise sensitivity implies noise sensitive, but the converse turns out not to be true. Uh, and this is even true even if you start asking quantitative questions. I said you can ask about quantitative questions for noise sensitivity. You can also ask for qu the analogous quantitative things for strong noise, and this implication works uh, just as well. Um, I'm not going to give the argument, it's, it, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's like a two-line argument. It's quite easy to do. But, uh, um, so the notion of strong noise sensitivity, it's, it's intimately connected to the structure of the set of witnesses. Are you going to give us an example which is noise sensitive? You'll get, yeah. yeah you'll, you'll get one in very soon. Uh, so <laughs> this is claims there. So, there, there's first, so there's also, there's an example which is, uh, strong one noise sensitive, but not strong zero. We'll see this in a moment. And, and, and it's, the point is that the one witnesses for your Boolean function can have a very, very different structure than the zero witnesses. Sort of very vaguely, like in 3SAT, if this is a very vague thing, like to show you 3SAT is satisfiable, I just provide for you the variables. If something's not satisfiable, I, I can't provide you in the same way the information that it's not satisfiable. So, so 1 and 0 can play a very asymmetric role, and that will happen here. Um, and finally, I'm going to save that for the end. OK, so let me give you an example now. Uh, so the, the very enlightening example, enlightening example is tribes which is described on the top picture here. So you par partition 1 through n into blocks like this. Of Each of these have length log n minus log log n. And I simply look, is there a block which is all 1s? If there's a block with all 1s, I say the function is 1. If there's no such block, I, I say the function is 0. Uh, OK. So it says here, right here, let f be 1 if some block is all 1s. Okay. What are the one witnesses for this? Uh, and, and let's take Pn to be a half here. So here's a one witness. The ones in blue. This is a one witness. Basically, by the way, I described the Boolean function. Those are exactly the one witnesses, one of these blocks. What does a zero witness look like? Uh, obviously that. I have to give you a zero in each of these. This is a zero witness. Notice the one, block, the one witnesses are just simple, next to each other, completely disjoint. The zero witnesses have very complicated overlap. Okay, 
So, in, so it's easy to show that the probability f is 1 is non-degenerate. It stays away from 0 and 1, basically, because the number of blocks which are 1 has a, basically a Poisson distribution in the limit. Um, this, uh, let me quickly mention, this example was of in, uh, interest since the influences turn out to be log n over n, as mentioned in the original paper. And they asked, in the original paper, is it the case that maybe for every Boolean function, there's always some variable whose influence is order log n over n, and that was shown later on to be true by uh, Kahn, Kali, and Lineal. So this log n over n is sort of optimal for that question, but that's not so related to the talk. Uh, it's easy to see this is noise sensitive. It's also easy to see that this is strong noise sensitive, strong one noise sensitive. This easily follows from the fact that the one witnesses are pairwise disjoint. However, one can show that the sequence is not zero strong. Somehow, when you, the effect of conditioning on a zero witness to be zero, when you do this condition here, it has drastic effects, much, much more drastic effects than when you condition on a one witness. And so it's, it's not uh, zero strong. And it's because these zero uh, witnesses have pairwise overlap. So that almost gives you your example, just switch. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now let me start mentioning some, some, some of the results. Uh, so let me mention some quantitative noise sensitivity results for the Erdos-Renyi random graph model. So in this first event, we're going to be at Pn equals 1 over n. That's, that's, in the, the, the real, that's the, real, the most interesting regime for the model because it's where the largest component s sort of becomes size n to the 2 thirds. And the event is we're going to ask in this random graph, is there a is there a, a cycle of length, is there a cycle of length contained between n to the one-third and two n to the one-third? Uh, so it turns out that this event, this particular event is noise sensitive, and in fact it's one strong noise sensitive. And in fact, there's even a, a quantitative version of this. So, oh, so the strength uh, will be a Boolean thing, or do we not uh, Swiss? No. Three storm, four storm, five storm. no, no, no. The, zero and one are just. The, those, it's, it's, I just have. Yeah, I'm just dealing with zero, one var 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 variables. Um, okay. So the so the so this is the the quantitative version. If your epsilon n goes to even if it goes to zero, as long as it stays, if it's much much bigger than n to the minus one third power, then you get this. Uh, the, the thing that if I condition on a particular one witness, in this case all the one witnesses are the same, condition on a one witness, I look at the probability that fn of the perturbed thing is one, this, and you subtract the, uh, the unconditioned probability, this is O of one. It goes to zero uh, in the limit, so uh, you, you get asymptotic independence. In particular, that's true for fixed epsilon, so this shows this one strong noise sensitivity. On the other hand, if you take epsilon to be much smaller than n to the minus one-third, then you get a type of stability. If the original sequence is one, then with extremely high probability, the perturbed sequence will also have output one, meaning you that... You won't touch the cycle. What, the cycle, yeah, you won't kill the... Yeah, it's trivial. The, the, you won't kill the cycle. Yeah, so far for when the probability is, uh, is when p is one-half, didn't you ask an example Strong, sensitive, and zero strong. Which is strong, one, which is noise sensitive and not one strong? No, no, no. which is, which is a, a noise sensitive. Strong, both one strong, sensitive, and zero strong. No, I haven't, but I haven't commented on that yet. I, that I haven't commented, so that's a good question. So I might mention that way at the end. Yeah. But I was just asked to provide one which is noise sensitive and not one strong. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but okay, but that, that's, uh, th that turns out not, s we didn't find this so easy to construct. We managed in the end. The, the, the Kelsey majority of Swedes? Yeah, okay, we're going to get, okay, that doesn't work. But we'll, that, that actually turns out to be another interesting example, which we'll see here. Uh, okay, so, uh, and if, if epsilon n is exactly one over n to the one third, you don't get either this behavior. So you, the, you have the rate at which things are happening. Uh, now, what's interesting, uh, just a comment for this, um, that this quantitative result involving n to the minus one-third, this matches what's called the critical window for this model. So it's, no, it, 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 it's known that, 
I don't think I'm going to go into this very much. If you happen to know what the critical window is, somehow the, 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 the noise you add to the system, for you to get this noise sensitivity, it has to be enough noise to pull you outside of what is called the critical window for the model. Um, I don't think it's worth going into details with that if those words don't mean, mean anything. Uh, so I won't say so much there. And the, 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 um, this is all I'm going to say about the argument. It's, ba it's, uh, it's based on some second moment calculation. It's based on some various types of calculations. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, what we do. that's what we do for a living. But, okay. <laughs> Hope that gives you a flavor of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now let me go on to the next one. Uh, so at first, this example might not look might not look so interesting or, but, or dry, but it's going to turn out to be in, related to other things that might sound more interesting. So I'm going to, the, the Boolean function I wanna, now want to look at is minimum degree at least k. So I do a random graph and I want to know, does every vertex have at least k edges coming out, coming out of it? It's a monotone function, that's the event I want to look at. Uh, it turns out that for the, the event having at least k edges coming out of every point, the correct value of p you should take so that this probability is, is non-degenerate is log n plus k minus 1 log log n over n. And it turns out if you look at this event, degree at least k, at that pn, it's, it is noise sensitive. And moreover, it's zero s strong noise sensitive. Now, even in this case, we have you can get you can get quantitative results, and here the epsilon the correct quantitative regime is one over log n. So if you take epsilon to be much much bigger than one over log n, you get exact sort of what we had in the other slide. But now we're dealing with zeros. So you can you take a zero witness, you condition on it being zeros, and you ask how does that affect the probability that the function is zero after I do the perturbation, and you subtract the unconditioned probability, and it says this goes to, to zero. So when you condition on a zero witness, this won't have any, uh, this will become asymptotically independent of that. And in particular, this gives you uh, no, ordinary noise sensitivity. If epsilon n is much less than one over log n, then you get this type of stability. If fn of x were zero beforehand, after you do the noise, it will still be zero. Notice the, the zero witnesses, uh, okay, um, uh, okay, well, I'll mention that in a moment. So eps, and if epsilon n is a, uh, of order one over log n, you get neither of these behaviors. Okay, so let's just discuss this for one second when, when k is zero, or k is one. So I want to know minimum degree at least one. That's just saying no isolated vertices. Now, it's very easy, it's, uh, the, the witness, what is a witness for of uh, a zero witness. A zero witness just looks like this. I take one vertex, I take all the edges coming out, and I and I and I turn them and there and I just turn them all off. I say they're they're off. Then you're guaranteed that uh, this is a zero witness. You have an isolated point, and, and this is the only type of zero witness. Oh. Okay. Talk. Uh, the, um, okay, so, uh, okay, so let me give you the proof. It's, 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 it's very easy. But let me mention the, the proof of this and the consequences of this zero strong net sensitivity for minimum degree at least k. So the proof idea, it's extremely simple, for, for establishing minimum degree k is zero strong noise sensitive. So it's basically because of the following. At this point, just take k to be 1. So we, 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 want, we want to talk about having an isolated vertex. Recall the tribes function over here. There, uh, the tribes were, uh, the, all the one witnesses were disjoint. And, and th th this makes it very easy to be one, one strong. And you have a similar type of thing. If you look at the zeros, for minimum degree at least k, or if we're thinking minimum degree at least 1, they're not going to be disjoint, but they're going to be awfully close to being disjoint. 
and they'll be close enough to being disjoint that basically uh, you can show very easily that uh, you, you have this zero strong noise sensitivity because they're almost disjoint. And then you sort of do that, and that's basically, the, that's basically all you do. Now, why are you interested in that? It's because you get consequences of things which a priori might not have been obviously noise sensitive. So let's now go back to the random graph model at Pn being log n over n and talk about connectivity. Let's forget this containing a perfect matching. So, con so connectivity is you recall the Pn being log n over n is that's the exact correct Pn to look at. And as a corollary, you get that this is noise sensitive and you even get that you even get that it's quantitatively noise sensitive at this rate one over log n. So why do you, why do you get that? And I'm, not, I'm just going to say this in words. The reason being, how different are the events? The event connectivity and no isolated vertices. Okay. Of course, if you're connected, you don't have any isolated vertices. But it's also the case if you don't have any isolated vertices. You, ha you are most likely connected. In other words, these two events are not the same event, but if you look at this, the symmetric complement of the events, that probability is going to zero. And so, it's one noise sensitive and zero noise sensitive? What, what connectivity? Yeah. No, no, so let me, let me get, uh, so uh, I'm going to comment on this. So, okay, so since the zero containing at least, the, having degree at least one is uh, zero strong, then it's therefore Ordinary noise sensitivity, noise sensitive, and because it's asymptotically the same event as connectivity, you get that the connectivity is noise sensitive, and you get the quantitative result. But you don't get these, these, you, th this strongness thing. This doesn't push through. If you can have events which are very close, where their symmetric complement is probably going to zero, but the, the, the strong and things don't carry, carry over. Um, so I'll, I'll mention that in, in a, a, the next one. So. For example, you can do something as similar with a Hamiltonian cycle. So for Hamilton cycle, as you'll recall, the interesting Pn is log n plus log log n over n. And containing a Hamilton so cycle, this is noise sensitive. This is because Hamilton cycle, well, if you have a Hamilton cycle, it means every vertex has degree at least 2. But it turns out if every vertex has a degree at least 2, that more or less guarantees you have a Hamilton Hamiltonian cycle in terms of probability. So Hamilton, having a Hamilton cycle is the same um, asymptotically as having degree at least two, and so you get the noise sensitivity. But on the other hand, Hamilton cycle is not zero strong. The, the, the structure of the zero, the, the zero witnesses for, uh, for the having degree at least two are very, have a very simple structure. But the, but the, 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 the structure of the zero witnesses for Hamilton cycle is much more complicated, and, and some of them are bad that some of them are bad witnesses, so you, you actually don't get that. Okay. But that's when so you have a difference between max and average somehow. If you had sort of an average yeah. witness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Really yeah. So we, we, I mean, so at some point we, were he we mentioned things like this in the paper, and sometimes we were hesitating. We, we ended up deciding we're going to take this as the, the formal definition in, in the end. I mean, you can have other definitions which are sufficient and they're not as clean. And so some of these other things might exactly give you this, because the, 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 the typical witnesses will be nicer witnesses. Yeah. Uh, yes? So uh, uh, connectivity, so is, it's not strongly noisy? Uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if we ended up checking. I, my guess is it's not zero strong, but I don't think we actually we checked that. Take a, um, you, you, cut, which is a very unreasonable, unreasonable yeah. reason for non-connectivity. That, that will stay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the next uh, event I want to look at is, is graph containment. One of the things we talked about earlier was containing a, a clique. Whether a graph contains a clique. But you can start saying, does it contain a, a given graph? So we've already seen the event of clique containment. More generally, let Hn be a graph on, at most, n vertices. And let fn be the indicator function that your erdos renyi graph contains hn. So before we looked at hn being a clique of the appropriate size log base 2 of n or whatever it was. And we ask, is this event noise sensitive? So again, we would mean that if I know I could, so, you know, whether a graph contains hn to begin with, and after I do the tiny perturbation, do these become asymptotically independent? Well, of course, 
If H then is a triangle for every n, obviously no. You're just going to stay. So what should you what what should you have what should your graph be doing in order to have some chance? Maybe. So is, is P now going to be fixed or is P going to no, be fixed? No, P N. Uh, in this point, imagine P N is going to be such that H N is non-degenerate. Okay. So for for triangles, that's trivially no. Okay. Yep. Uh, HN is a union of log n disjoint edges. The answer is uh, no. So it's not, if the graph's growing, that doesn't necessarily help you because um, uh, having log n disjoint edges, this is sort of going to be like a majority function. And so it's, it'll be stable. So um, it turns out a, a relevant thing is if the graph is strictly balanced. So uh, a strictly balanced graph is a graph with the property that if you look at its edge vertex ratio, that's, it's larger than the edge vertex ratio of all the smaller subgraphs. And one of the theorems is that if you take, if your graph HN is strictly balanced and the number of edges in it is bigger than one, much bigger than one, meaning it's growing, but it's at most log N over log log N to the one half power, then it turns out that this function is noise sensitive, and in fact, it's one strong noise sensitive. Now, you could ask, how sharp is this log n to the one half? Okay, we don't know exactly, but, but it's not so far. So it turns out there's a sequence of strictly balanced graphs hn with ln being uh, asymptotic to log n, at, where the number of edges is l log n, and it's, they're strictly balanced, but you don't get the, you don't get the noise uh, sensitivity. And what you could do is basically take two triangles and a path between them of size uh, 3 halves log lambda of n and where your pn is lambda over n. It turns out this graph is strictly balanced, but it, you don't get the noise sensitivity. So, you know, of course, there's a big gap here. I don't know, log n to the 2 thirds, who knows? I would be surprised if you could figure it out. Anyway. Um, okay. So... Uh, let me, uh, in my last two and minutes or two and a quarter minutes left, let me quickly very mention uh, the, the, some differences between noise sensitivity and strong noise sensitivity. One is you have this dependence in noise sensitivity. Noise sensitivity says this quantity is asymptotically independent in ordinary noise sensitivity. And I mentioned this doesn't depend on epsilon. But it turns out our definition of one strong noise sensitivity, it required that this thing went to zero they become asymptotically independent for every pot of value of epsilon. Turns out that it, whether this goes to zero can depend upon epsilon. So it can be the case for large epsilon, you get asymptotic independence, and for small, you don't. You can create examples like this. So that's one way in which it's different. And uh, the last slide. So noise stable means the following. It basically means if you take your noise to be very, very small, then with very high probability, if you started off being one, the perturbation is going to be one, no matter where in your sequence you are. Uh, now, it turns out that, on the other hand, assuming your functions are non-degenerate, whenever you do some noise to the system, the probability the function gets changed is always going to be at least proportional to epsilon. But Interestingly, forget the three, okay, in the three iterated majority, this turns out, three iterated majority is here. It's just, you, you make a three iterated tree, you put bits down here and you do majority iteratively. It turns out this is not noise sensitive. And if you look at the, this probability of having a zero, given a witness is one. Wait, you said it's not, it's not strongly noise sensitive. Sorry, thank you. It's not strongly noise sensitive. It's, no, it's uh, known to be sensitive. Uh, then this thing is epsilon over two. Turns out something really weird, this is the last thing I'm gonna say, something really weird and different happens with the five majority function, which is described here. What happens is something which cannot happen in ordinary noise sensitivity. What happens is no matter which epsilon you take, even if you take epsilon extremely close to one, lots of noise, if you condition on a one witness for the five majority and look at the probability it gets switched by the perturbation, is n goes to infinity, this is, turns out to be equal to zero. We, you don't take a limit as epsilon goes to zero. It's just for any level of noise, you get extremely high dependence. 
So something very different has happened with five and three majority. And this is sort of something like this cannot happen in ordinary noise sensitivity. Okay, so, so five majority is, is noise. Yeah, is what? Five majority is uh, one noise. No, no, it's, it's even worse. No, it's even, it's, it's not. Okay. It's, it's even more stable than three majority. Yeah, <laughs> but there's two. But I was going to. But then, yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. More comments, questions. Oh, I just uh, one question I ask in the lecture. Do oh, I, yeah. Do I have a function which? Is, but I have another question. Yeah. But yeah. Yes, we do. We have one that are both one and zero. There's uh, somewhere. Yeah. Balance, fa oh, balance function of those balance, which is both. Uh, yeah, so but it took it a while to make. Yeah, but yeah, there, there's one, and we have one in the paper. And the, another question about the percolation. So, just uh, can you say something? So, we know that percolation is noise sensitive in the usual sense. I don't know what, what the new sense. It's uh, not, not uh, but uh, is it, can you say what are the initial states where, for which it's, it's still stable? Like for the all zero, if if the if all the hexagons are white, yeah. Then you know, in this case, right, it's stable. Can you characterize or? No, I don't think you could characterize. I think that's probably a hard question. I mean, yeah, well, you, you can make a lot of statements, can with, you make with, some, can you make but not any. I don't know how many interesting statements you can make. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Why is five different to three? I, okay, the answer is I have no idea. You create, you, you can look at these conditional probabilities, you write down a recurrence relation, you look at the fixed points, it just has a, it, it, the, the, uh, something which before was, uh, something becomes a repelling fixed point, which for the three majority was neither repelling nor uh, attracting. But other than that, I can't, I, I don't know. We, we, I don't, there's no good, I don't know a good explanation. So you talked about minimum degree K. What about something like K core? Property of having a oh boy, I'm, I'm not that much in the random rest. I don't know what that means, K-core. But the, the, yeah, I don't know. Good question. I, 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 we've never thought about that question. Well, I, I think even for graphs, that's probably not good. You take uh, being non free colorable, it would be or any empty heart. It's, I don't think non free colorability can be understood by looking at some simple. Uh, Is there a characterization that you hinted at that you can make more precise between the structure of those witnesses that guarantees? No, you mean can we describe when you get one strong in terms of the structure of the witnesses? No, I mean, I mean we have some feelings of what's causing things, but I don't, there's, we, don't, we don't have any characterization that you can say in terms of the structure of the witnesses. <laughs> but in some of these theorems, is it true that in some of these theorems, the, what you used is the combinatorial structure of the midterms. So you say they have certain sizes, and we know distribution of the intersections. So, so you could, uh, for some of these statements, you could make it you know, a bit strong, say. Because yeah. what I'm saying. Well, so I don't know, what, but by it's stronger, but say, so I agree, like, for the minimum K, you have a very nice picture of the witnesses. But I know, but I, I'm not sure in which direction one will want to strengthen the th things because if you can already say what the quantitative noise sensitivity rate is, I'm, I'm not sure what the other there might be, but I'm not, I don't see. Yeah, the you have other. a function whose midterms are of these general. sizes, and I, I give you just the, the distribution of the size of the midterms and the size of the intersections, and then you say this has to be zero state. Oh, <coughs> no idea. I, I have to think about it. Thanks again. Or one more question. Do you have an example of a, a sensitive function that, uh, with a quantitative uh, threshold is uh, necessary, strictly larger than the, than the, the 
the size of the threshold. I mean, <laughs> maybe it was not so clear. You say that at some point that uh, for cycles and uh, oh, yeah. the other ones, it coincides uh, yeah. the epsilon in, uh, it, times p equals the, mm. the threshold width. Yeah, we, we, there is an example in the paper which shows that this this philosophy that the noise, how much noise, the noise quantitative noise sensitivity is not always governed by the length of the of the critical window. Uh, some, sometimes you have to the, further. Uh, yeah, I have to remember now if it's further shorter, but there is one example where they don't correspond. But uh, that you, yeah, that we, I could explain it separately. Okay, thanks, guys.